Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You know, Elevate Nights is a night where we literally want to elevate our spirit man. You know, we live in a soul, right? We have this soulish, ordinary mentality that we live there so long that we forget that our spirit man needs to be stirred on the inside. And so Elevate Nights was created for that purpose. It's not a, a typical ordinary service. It's not. It's a night where we're asking the Holy Spirit to stir our hearts. And it's not, it's not a showboat either. It's not for you to just look. It's for you to also discover and, and hear from heaven. And, and, and we're here to empower you and remind you that the same Holy Spirit that's on this team, this leadership, is the same Holy Spirit that's on you. You just have to be an open vessel and say, God, do something special with me. And so tonight, I'm going to talk about ordinary people, supernatural God. Is that okay? Let's talk about this. Aren't you glad that his name cannot be overcome? Like there's something about that name Jesus, right? I'm going to start in Acts chapter 19. And uh, if you have your Bibles with you, go there. If not, we'll have it on the screen. But Acts chapter 19, verse 11 through 12, I love how the amplified version says it. It says, God was doing extraordinary and unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Who was doing this? God. And who was it doing it through? Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or face towels or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick and their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. I mean, just think about this. That God himself hand-selected disciples, people, that had a passion, that had a belief system that was greater than any of their experiences. And they were willing to accept not only the call or accept the gift or accept the power of God, but they were willing to accept it with the suffering that came with it. How many know that your suffering makes you so much more anointed in order for you to do what God is calling you to do? God never will waste any sickness, disease, any error, any sin. Any God won't waste it. God will use it for something greater if you let him. And so here you're looking at this verse, and and God was doing extraordinary and unusual miracles. And how many know that God wants to do unusual and extraordinary miracles today, tonight, in this season, right now? God wants to do that. The, The issue is that there's not enough vessels that want it. And so I want you to lift up your hands and put them in front of your face and, and say this tonight, seriously, say, God, use these hands. Use these hands. Look at the the word ordinary on the screen. Here's what it means. It means with no special or distinctive features. Common, routine, or normal. Just just take take some self-examination and just look at your own personal life right now. Are you living a routine spiritual life? Are you living a common spiritual life? Is your spiritual walk normal? Because when you get God super on your natural, it's a supernatural walk with God. It doesn't, it doesn't look like the world. The world is ordinary. God is extraordinary. God wants to invite us to be extraordinary followers of Jesus Christ. God wants to do something unique and special. I mean, think about this. He says, with no special, special distinctive features. Can I be honest with you? I know that many times we love the, the pictures of Jesus with this beautiful, you know, almost like blondish hair, green eyes or blue eyes. And he's got this masculinity of just like looking all like fabulous, just all model-like, right? But do you realize that Jesus didn't even look anything like that? If you study Isaiah 53 or, or 54, you see that Jesus had dark hair, dark skin, dark eyes. And as a matter of fact, when you read the verse, it says that if Jesus were to walk by any of us, nobody would look twice. 
Everybody say, Phew. then God can use me. Because you know what, you know what our mindset is? We think that we have to have a certain shape in order to be used by God. We think that we have to have this discern look in order to be used by God. We think that we have to have this, 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 this kind of social status, financial status, or we think that we have to have this pedigree where we come from an amazing, incredible family line of just successful and successful and amazing people. But let me tell you something. God looks for common people, and then he makes them uncommon. That's what God's looking for. And so if you're common, guess what? You can change tonight for free 99. You can change. I mean, God used the hands of his disciples and Paul that even handkerchiefs. I mean, literally the thing that you blow your nose with. Like people come up to him like, hey, my, 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 my family is sick. My, my uncle is dying. My mom is dying. Okay. And then just. Here, go and put the handkerchief on your family and she'll be made well. I mean, this is the kind of power that was happening in the first century church. I mean, do you believe the Bible? Honestly, do you really believe the Bible? Do you believe that you and I have that same authority that we can actually walk in that? Like there's a shift. Listen, there's a shift in God's kingdom right now. God is trying to speak to the hearts of people and people have to have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying God is speaking God is speaking to someone tonight God is going to challenge you tonight to think different not only that it says that if it even touched his skin any handkerchief any apron if anything just touched him that's it that person can go it's kind of like when the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years she's flowing with blood she went to doctors she went to specialists she went to you know anything and everything you could think of in order for her to get her healing but it says and then all she did was touch the hem of his garment who do you think Paul got that idea from huh Paul said imitate me as I imitate Christ y'all know your Bible Let's try that again. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate. So Paul hears about that woman that touched the hem of his garment. He says, you can do that? Okay. So he started getting aprons and handkerchiefs and anything in front of All right, go. Like, wow. Like, what depth of faith, what depth of trust did Paul develop? To literally just take God at his word. And it wasn't just Paul. It was all his disciples were walking in power and authority. Jesus said, I give you power and my authority. I give you my name. And it's not that you're going there to lay hands on people in the name of Mauricio or in the name of Virginia or in the name of Alexis or in the name of Shah. No, it's when you know the authority of the name. Jesus. When you really know that name, when, when you've experienced and encountered a personal, intimate relationship with that name, when that name is more real than the very chair you're sitting on, that's when supernatural things happen. But until you get a revelation of that name, you'll always be just an ordinary Christian looking for just good preaching, good programs, good events, and not realize that God gave you more than just wanting you to hear a great message from the Bible. I told you this is not an ordinary service tonight. Not just that. He not only healed the sick. It says that he even set people free from demonic darkness. Like, I know that so many of us, we call depression, depression. No, I just, I'm depression because, you know, it, I had a really bad life. No, let me tell you something. Depression is from the devil. And and it's, it's, it's Satan using that trauma, it's Satan using that, that pain, that suffering, and then darkness comes in and he takes a foothold, then he gets a stronghold on your life, and then darkness starts coming in, and so what does Satan do? He depresses you. He presses down on us. And I listen, depression is real. It's a real thing. We, we, we probably, most of us have probably experienced that. I know when I first started Olive Church the first year, I fell into depression. Nobody would know it because I would put on a good fake face. I'd put on the mask. 
and I'd come and do what I have to do. Then I'd go home and feel just depressed. It's a real thing, but it's demonic. It's not of God. You can't just blame it because of the work environment. No, there's darkness and forces. Read your Bible, Ephesians. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers in darkness, right? And there's spiritual hosts of wickedness above us. Do you still believe that? And so God, God gives us, he gives us authority. He gives us wisdom through his word on how to combat this. And so here you have all these amazing disciples. But what I love about uh, the word is that there's actually people, and I'm sure, you know, some of us have experienced this kind of power, but even in our generation, there have been great men and women that have walked in this kind of power. I'm talking about, you know, power where people called them crazy. Let's just take Oral Roberts. Has anyone ever heard of Oral Roberts? Lift your hand if you ever heard of Oral Roberts. Let me tell you, Oral Roberts was a anointed evangelist, not just an evangelist, but anointed to do miracles, and and people would come by the thousands from all over the world to come and receive a miracle. Catherine Coleman was another one. Let me tell you something. When you watched her, she looked weird. That just shows you how God will not use, you know, like pedigree that's like awesome.com like she was strange looking she acted strange she talked strange like watch her videos she'd be on the stage and she wore these long dresses and a lot of times it looked like she was floating on the stage you know and it was like how does that even make sense but let me tell you something oral roberts and Catherine coleman's in their meetings there would be wheelchairs stacked Stacked by the hundreds because people were coming out of wheelchairs. They were walking. Blind eyes can see again. Deaf ears can hear again. I mean, we're talking like supernatural stuff. God using ordinary people that were willing to let God do something extraordinary. Or Roberts wasn't good looking either. I'm glad I'm not good looking. I'm like, at least I'm anointed to do something. Praise Jesus. Yeah. If you're good looking, don't, I, I ain't hating on you. <laughs> you just get the bonus. You're good looking and anointed. How about that? But what I'm trying to say to you is, is that here you have people that called them crazy. When you start living a supernatural life, people will start calling you names. You mentioned the word elevate church. But you're like, oh, ah, it's that, that spirit filled church, huh? Oh, it's that church, huh? Okay, yeah, I've heard of that church. But they don't, they, then they don't say anything negative. I was like, okay, it's that church that does miracles, huh? It's that church where people get healed. It's that church where people get loved. Then you got people say, they're kind of crazy. They're a little bit too much. Like they're all lifting their hands when they sing. They're weird. They're crazy. But you take these people, you take Reinhard Bonnke, in one meeting, he would have anywhere from, from five to seven million people. Reinhard Bonnke would be in meetings in Africa. People would literally bring their loved ones who died days before these big, huge uh, um, meetings. And, and they would bring dead bodies to the meetings. And all of a sudden, these dead people would come back to life. I mean, he didn't have to go touch them. He's just preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, preaching the name. And all of a sudden, dead people were coming back to life. And it was recorded. Listen to me. Recorded by local media and validated. Same thing goes with Oral Roberts. When they would come and talk that he was crazy or when they would talk about Catherine Coleman that she was crazy. Let me tell you something. The news media would show up to try to go ahead and shut it down. The same media people read their stories would get saved that night or get healed of something. That's wild. Those people would get saved. The people that would be like, oh yeah, we're going to get them now. They try to write up something like, and then all of a sudden they're in the beginning and the spirit of God just hits them. And they're like, now walk into the altar crying. And then they started coming, doing it for free 99 just to get more publicity out there. That this is real. They would show up on the LA Times the next day. 
or the tribute or whatever was out there back then. They would be on the on the morning paper of Oral Roberts, Catherine Coleman. I mean, this is stuff that has actually happened. It is possible for us to walk in this power. The question is, do we desire? You're, listen, you don't have to be special. You don't. You just need to be available. God's looking for some fat Christians. <laughs> Faithful. Available. What's the T? And teachable. Are you teachable tonight? Or did you already shut down on me? If you're saying he's crazy, praise God. Thank you. Because then I'm definitely uncommon. God wants to, he wants to, he wants to see us walk in this divine power and thousands of people would come from all over the world to come and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, it always starts with a person, but it ends with Jesus. Why? You're the closest thing to Jesus that people will see at the workplace, in your church, in your community, in your family. That's, that's, that's the Jesus they're going to see. They're not going to meet Jesus in person on this earth. They're going to meet you and me. And we want to bring them something beautiful, right? And so you had these people that were just, just coming from everywhere. So what was it about them? I'll tell you what it was. It was, it was what you call anointing. Like not everybody is, is an Oral Roberts. Not everybody is a Catherine Coleman. You know what it was about them is that they discovered what they were anointed to do. They discovered it. So many of us, we've probably been saved for too long and we still don't know what we're anointed to do. But praise God, we came tonight because tonight we can go ahead and be reminded again and really discover what has God anointed me to do? Now, does that mean that you have to be in ministry to be anointed? No. How about you be in the music industry and be anointed? How about you be in the film industry and be anointed? How about you be in the medicine industry and be anointed? Right? Whatever career path you choose, be anointed at it. How many know that God wants to put an anointing on you? Like if you want a miracle and healing anointing on your life, you can get that from God. Specific. If you want a financial anointing on your life, you can get that. What do I mean by that? Do you realize that there are people that are just anointed to make money? Like they could just make money. Like you just think of these billionaires. They can lose it all today, but they'll make it all back tomorrow. Why? The money didn't make them. They made the money. They're just anointed. Do you realize that if you want to be anointed in business in your life, you can be anointed in business? That means that anything that you put your hands to when it comes to launching a business, why, why can't you be anointed to be successful in that? Don't you think that God needs people in the marketplace ministry to bring the provision for his vision of the church? You can be, you can be anointed as a family uh, man or family woman, like you can be the kind of person that's anointed to bring restoration to families, to bring healing to families, to bring healing to marriages. That's an anointing. You can have that kind of anointing. How about an anointing for restoration? Like anyone that you come in contact with, man, they can be divided, broken, busted, disgusted. Then you show up in their house and all of a sudden everyone's reconciling. There's an anointing for that. Now, I didn't say there's a gift for that. The gift is free. The anointing is not. The anointing will cost you sacrifice. The anointing will cost you a prayer life. The anointing will cost you a word life. The anointing will cost you a humble life. The anointing will cost you all of you. I must die so that he can live and the anointing will come upon us. I didn't say gift. I didn't say talent. God's like, I just gave you that. But how many know, like, have you noticed, like, you can have one person sing in church, out of church, and they sing, and, like, they don't shake you. Like, they don't even move you. Then you have another person sing the same song, and they sing it, and you get goosebumps. And it ain't Casper the Holy Ghost, right? I mean, you literally feel the presence of God. Or have you ever seen someone pray and they pray this dry religious prayer and then you're done and you're just kind of, you've been looking at them the whole time. 
<laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> Please, like, shut. Or, or they're praying. Listen, or they're praying at the, at the restaurant, and they're just, like, like going and going, like, oh, and, and last for it. But it's like there's no, there's just, like, but then someone prays the same prayer over lunch, and it's like you're ready to get saved. <laughs> What's the difference? Anointing. You can be gifted at something, but not everyone's anointed at everything. And let me say it this way. You ain't called to everything, but everyone is anointed for something. So if you think, I'm going to be the healing anointing, the business anointing, the financial anointing, uh, I don't think so. Uh, maybe not. You're probably chewing on too much. How about be a master of one? And be anointed at that. Ask yourself, how long have I been walking with God? And what am I anointed to do? Like, what's the theme of my life? If you weren't here Sunday, I was preaching on find a theme in the Bible for your life. Find a theme. Find, find something that literally resonates in your spirit, man. And then God puts an anointing on you. All right, let's keep reading. So God is looking for people that will believe him. That's how simple it is, that will believe him and that are willing to sacrifice. And, and you know what? You have to get over yourself. Like the anointing of God, the purest anointing. Like we, you can be anointed, but if you want to tap into the full anointing of God, man, you got to die to yourself completely and stop trying to, you know, talk yourself out of your promise. Stop trying to talk yourself out of your healing. Stop trying to talk yourself out of your victory. Stop, I think most of us talk ourselves out of our victory when God's trying to talk us into our victory. Just always talking ourselves like, well, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'll never go to school. I don't know. Maybe this is the job I'll have for the rest of my life. It's like, what? Look at this. Acts 19, 13, 14. Are you guys okay? Okay, look. Verse 13. And then some Jews. Listen, they wanted some of that. Look at this. And some of the Jews who went around driving out evil spirits, everybody say, tried. Come on, man. God didn't want us to try. He wants us to be anointed. They tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. That's like you going to the mall and you're like, in the name of Jesus of Elevate Church who preaches Jesus, you come out right now because pastor said it on Wednesday night. <laughs> Verse 14, seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. Isn't that amazing? But let's look at what happened to these jokers. Are you ready? Come on, everybody say, you need to know Jesus personally. No, look at your neighbor and like, honestly, like look at each other, please. I know that I always say this, look at your neighbor, touch your neighbor, hit your neighbor, <laughs> slap your neighbor. No, just look at your neighbor and be like, you need to know Jesus personally. And if they didn't look at you, cast the devil out of them right now. Just stop in the name of Jesus. You dumb spirit, come on. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's look at this. Acts 19, verse 15, look at this. But one day, everybody say, but one day. Okay. See, you can't play with God because one day. But one day the evil spirit answered them. Jesus, I know. <laughs> and Paul, I know. About... <laughs> That's how demons talk. They're just real goofy. <laughs> but who are you? I, 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 the demons. I know Jesus. Heck, we definitely know Paul. But who the heck are you? Come on. If you're playing games, one day evil is going to talk back to you. Evil is going to start having a little conversation with you. Here's a better question. I wonder if hell even knows your name. Hell should know your name. Because he said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Man, when you and I walk in a room, darkness should flee. If, and if you think, okay, well, you're weird. No, no. Here's what, here's what Jesus said. You are the light of the world. 
and you are the salt of the earth. So let me just bring it to your conservative level. If you're the light of the world, what does light do to darkness? It cancels it out. Okay. So, so when you're anointed and you walk in a room, the atmosphere should change. But if you're bringing the other atmosphere of always funk, come on, you don't, you don't want to have the anointing of funk. Like you're good at it. Like you can really turn an atmosphere around to a negative. Because listen, it's the same influence the enemy has. He also has influence to change the atmosphere. The question is, which atmosphere are you changing and for whom? Are you with me? And so he says, uh, I know, I know Paul, I know Jesus, but I've never heard of you. And look at what verse 16 says of 19 of Acts. He says, and the man who had the evil spirit jumped on Sceva's sons. He overpowered them all. He gave them a terrible beating. How does a demon beat you up? <laughs> they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. The Jews... And Greeks living in Ephesus heard about this? They were all overcome with fear. Look at this. They held the name of the Lord Jesus in high honor. They're like, we ain't playing no more. We are going to be honorable Christians, and we're going to honor the name of Jesus. I think in order for us to come back to the supernatural power of God, we have to come back to the honor of that name that's above every name, Jesus. Amen? He said, we're going to start honoring this name. Verse 18. And many who believed now came and openly admitted what they had done. Look at this. The anointing was so great that the conviction fell on them that they were coming and saying, hey, man, you know what? I was kind of like them jokers too. Or, hey, you know what? Uh, there was this reverence, this fear, not a fear of God in the sense of, you know, being terrified. But there was this holy reverence. They're just like, I want to be right. And a number of those who had practiced evil magic brought their scrolls together and they set them on fire out in the open. Come on, all the witches and warlocks came to the meeting too. They're like, oh, we, we heard about that name. They set them on fire out in the open. They added up the value of the scrolls and their scrolls were worth more than someone could earn in two lifetimes. And the word of the Lord spread everywhere. It became more and more and more powerful. Think about this. When you and I take our ordinary life and we place it before a supernatural God, just think about the Holy Spirit work that he can begin to do through you and me. And just imagine nobody will ever have to promote any church ever again because our life will be a walking billboard. This is many, many started coming. People started giving their life to Christ. Think of your workplace. Do any of your coworkers come to Jesus because of you? That's not a hate. That's a question. When you walk to your workplace, are people's lives being changed because you're there or are you ordinary like everybody else? Is there, anoint is there an anointing on your life when you go to work? What's the anointing? It's so simple. It's the presence of God. Is the presence of God on your life when you go to work? Now, I'm not saying you have to be perfect because we're not perfect. Okay, we're not. I'm sure, you know what, at work, we'll all have a slip up. We get angry at someone. We, you know, raise that voice to someone. We, 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 we yell at someone. But how many know that one moment doesn't define you? Look at Acts chapter 5, verse 12 and 15. It says, the apostles did many signs and wonders among the people. All the believers. Everybody say, all the believers. Lift your hand high up in the air and say, I'm one of them. Look around you. Lift it high. Come on. Stay with me, please. Don't get tired on me. We're almost done. Say, I'm a believer. I, say it again. I'm a believer. Close your eyes. I believe you, Jesus. Okay, put your hands down now. Look at this. It says, all the believers used to meet together at Solomon's porch. So people brought those who were sick into the streets. They placed, placed them on beds and mats, and they hoped that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he 
walked by. From ordinary people, the supernatural God. God wants to put his super on our natural guys. And, and, and I get it, in our culture today, we're just not taught to think like that. We're just, we're so comfortable. We're, we just treat church kind of like ah, a place where we go and we hear good messages, great preaching. We go to places just to worship, but, but there's no evidence. There's, there's no fruit. There's, there's no power. It, it's just I'm an attender. I, I just go to church. I, I, I'm a good person. I, I, I do love people. I actually love God too. I love God. I love people. But how many know that Jesus, when he said, I transfer to you now my power and I give you my Holy Spirit, it wasn't to remain dormant. It was to go into all the world and preach this gospel. Not to be ordinary telling you and you don't have to be nothing special I promise you you don't <laughs> I mean just think what are other things that we can do other than be in ministry what if God has placed a passion for you to write books what if you wrote anointed books books that would literally change the course of people's life not because you're awesome and you're amazing but because you're so great at bringing people back to God like, what if you were that kind of writer? Or, or what if you guys wrote songs that weren't just good lyrics, right? But that there were songs that had the anointing of God that can lift the burdens and destroy the yokes of bondage on people. Like, as the music goes out, just bam, things are breaking. People are falling. People are kneeling. People are crying, right? What if, what if that is the kind of songs that we would write? Or if you're a business owner, what if your business ethics if your business principles had the anointing of God that your workers your employees were coming to Jesus not because how you preach but because of the presence of God inside of you what if <laughs> I love this look it up on the screens the best thing you can do is find what you're anointed to do everybody say that the best thing I should do is find what I'm anointed to do. Do you know that you can be the most incredible anointed encourager? Like, what if you discovered that and said, you know what? I'm actually good at encouraging people. I better put a little Jesus on that. You know, kind of like some of you that like tapatio, some of you put in your purses and you go in restaurants, you're like always putting a little bit of that. What if you put a little bit of Jesus on on that talent and that gift he placed on your life. If you're a great encourager, be the most anointed encourager on how to bring people up, how to elevate them back to Christ. Man, you can be that. The best thing you can do is find what you're anointed to do. And once you discover it, develop it. Grow it. Expand it. Share it. Let it pour out of you. It's not just know it. It's develop it. It's get better. Get stronger in that anointing. Walk in that authority, in humility, and you watch what God will do. Come on. You have all these people in the Bible that are normal. Read your Bible. Peter, fisherman. Matthew, tax collector. Luke, a struggling doctor. I mean, just look at all these people in the Bible. All of these people that God used in the Bible, they were all just, I mean, let's, let's close with this. Let's think David. We all know the story of David and Goliath, right? David took out Goliath. We know that. But, but just think about this. David is 12 years old, 14. It goes back and forth. Scholars have studied the age of David when he took Goliath down. He's about 12 or 14. Let's just say 12. He was 12 years old when he shows up to this Philistine and Israel battle. And, and, and he says, I'm going to take him down. And, and, and who's this uncircumcised Philistine that he thinks that he could come against the armies of God? And, and we know that he takes Goliath down. But just think about this. Just think. This is David. He wasn't 
He wasn't special. As a matter of fact, David had this spirit of rejection on him, a spirit of abandonment on him. Think about it. When, when the prophet Samuel, when he came because God ordered him, go to Jesse's house, his father, and he says, I want to anoint myself a king. And he walks into Jesse's house, and, and he sees seven sons. Isn't it sad that Jesse, the father, he didn't even invite David to come be a part of this. Like he left him outside. Like you're not invited to the anointing party. God said, anoint for me a king. And David is just, can you imagine? David's like wondering like, man, I wonder how come I wasn't invited. I, I wonder why, I wonder why they didn't invite me to be a part of that. I am his son. He was also known as the black sheep of the family. The loser. And, and, and Samuel's like, okay, God, is this the one? No. Nope. Is this the one? No. Nope. Is this the one? No. Nope. And seven times, no. And God, God, Samuel's like, God, like, you sure this is the right house? And God said, no, there's one. And then Samuel said to the father, Jesse, he's like, hey, man, are you sure you don't have any more kids? He's like, yeah. Yeah, there's one more, but surely not. <laughs> Even his own father couldn't see the potential that David had. And I share this with you because you're probably sitting here thinking, I'm hearing you, Pastor, but I don't see the potential that I have. So I can't connect with this message. Well, I'm here to remind you. That if David was abandoned, if David was rejected, if David was never invited to hang out with the cool people, and you kind of feel that spirit of rejection, abandonment, left out, maybe someone has said, surely not you, surely not you. But how many know that God loves to use the surely nots? I mean, definitely surely not me. I shouldn't be here today. Surely not this little kid from the hood. I know about you know what I used to do when I was a little kid and now but now I get it I get it and, I, and I'm gonna make my point with this and we're gonna pray and let's get the heck out of here all right check this out when I was a little kid I used to climb a tree Alexis where's my daughter I used to climb a tree Alexis and we were so poor it was it was horrible we had, I had no toys I had nothing but I had a tree anyone even like a tree that you can go hang her out at on the alley it was like a tree in someone's neighborhood like in their like their property i used to climb on that tree and i remembered that today alexis and i would climb up there and i would pretend that i had a full band and i would be up there like i'm to pass around i would be like <laughs> and i would like and, I, and I lights i mean like I'm, my head's going like i'm telling you man it was a party this, this little kid up there, like, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just going nuts. Let me tell you something. I can't play an instrument for lick. I definitely can't sing for lick. But let me tell you something. But when we started Elevate Church, we started with a bunch of kids who were on our worship team. We had no leadership. We had no one to help us. But when God places an anointing on a person, it doesn't matter if you have someone that's qualified. God was just looking for someone available. And so if you think about this, when we started this worship team, I was up here being the worship leader, trying to lead them, tell them, like, I don't even know music. I don't even know anything. No, no, don't do it like that. Do it like this. Don't, yes or no, Sarah? Like, Sarah, open your eyes. Sarah, open your eyes. Remember that? Alexis, sing! <laughs> I'm not kidding. It happened. It happened. I'm on a Sunday service. We're in worship. She takes off running to the office. I'm like, and she's leading the song. And then we had this, this, this really nice black guy, really cool guy. Couldn't sing for a lick. Man, he saw that as an opportunity. He got up there and was like, ah, nah, nah, nah. and it was just like, it was a train wreck. So I'm in the back. Come on, Alexis. You can do it. 
Felicia was up here too. Felicia, open your eyes. Y'all remember this, right? What was it about David? Because think about this. David shows up on the scene. And when he battled with the Philistine army, it wasn't Israel against the Philistines. It was one man, one boy against the Philistines. And let me tell you something. He faced a giant. He faced a very well-trained master killer. I mean, we're talking Goliath was like a one-man army. He was huge. And, and he's telling little David, 12-year-old boy, boy, when I'm done with you, I'm going to throw your carcass and I'm going to feed them to the birds. And what did David have? In the Hebrew times, slingshots were toys for kids. They were toys. So he had a slingshot and he's like, okay, what do I do? Okay. He gets a few rocks. But when you think about it, if we were to do a, a sermon series on the rock of David, I promise you, we won't find nothing special about the rock. It was just the rock. Just the rock. His slingshot, it was a toy. David, the scrawny little kid. But here's what you think. But when God's anointing gets in the rock, but when God's anointing gets on the sling, and when God's anointing gets on your life, you're a giant killer. You're, you're a giant killer. Why do you think God says this? If you won't praise me, if you won't worship me, the rocks will. God will anoint rocks to worship him and praise him. So stop holding back and say, God, anoint this rock. Anoint my life. Do something with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Bow your head, close your eyes. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.